Many people who want to invest don't know where to start. Experts say the important thing is to start as soon as you can. A little today can become much more in the long run. Troy Lars, the head of distribution at String Fellow Investment Specialists, joins us now to discuss starting an investment portfolio. Troy, thanks so much for your time Thank you, today. Zing. Why is why is the world of investment so scary for us? You know, I think that people look at bad news and associate bad news with investments and, and, and loss. You know, that people's income just becomes so important to them. It's, it's, it's the fear factor, if I can put it to you that way. Um, and I think that's why people are scared. And, and there's just so much more products out there than what there were years ago. And yeah. There's so much more social awareness of investing now. Okay. Do you think we do enough to, to explain how this world actually works? Because as you say, a big part of it is also just lack of knowledge about how these things work. Look, I, I think that we can never sort of do enough. I mean, all that you need to do is you look, need to look at the statistics in terms of people that are investing. You know, if I take it as an example, we're busy with fees must fall, education. Yeah. And if you, uh, stat Statistics SA have found that 38% uh, of Gauteng, or the people who didn't study, was because of financial restraint. Mm. Um, you know, uh, Western Cape is one of the lower uh, provinces, but the general feeling is that people don't invest enough. Um, so we can never focus enough in terms of that. Yeah. Why is it important to start as early as possible? Well, the earlier, the, the better you'll be off. I mean, j just to give an idea, I'm, I'm the age of 43. Okay, so if I had to start saving now only for my retirement, I would have to be putting away a third of my income. Okay, if, whereas if I'd started at the age of 20, it would have been only 5% of my income. Okay. So the earlier the start, the better that, that it is to invest for you, and it's going to benefit you and your, and your family, obviously. Now, there is a lot um, out there. There's a lot of information, but there's also, as you said, thousands of different products. How do I choose? Well, the first thing you've got to decide is that why are you investing? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think like anything in life, you know, when we go on holiday, we have a destination in mind. Yeah. So when you look at investing, the first step is to decide what are you investing for. Not only when you come up with a goal for investing, the second part is then going to be the timeline for that goal. Okay. You know, the, the, the shorter the period, the more conservative you need to maybe be because you want to protect your capital, okay? The longer period you've got, the more you can be aggressive and take chances. Okay. And then that relates again to the third point, which is obviously the risk profile. So, you know, different products, I mean, bank products as an example, yeah. uh, you know, if you look at money market as an example, it's pretty much almost a guaranteed product. Wouldn't always say it's always guaranteed with <laughs> recent years, but, uh, but it's certainly the, one of the most guaranteed products. And that, that's more for your safer investor. Okay. So, yes. And risk, determining what your own risk appetite is, how hard is that? Look, risk appetite, and it, 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 it is sometimes, it, it's not always as complicated as what we make it to be. You know, I think if you speak to your financial advisor and tell him what your specific goal is, I think that that comes back down to timeline, as we mentioned earlier. And also the other problem that I also found is that generally what happens is people tend to panic when it comes to investing. Mm. They haven't played sufficient uh, investment. That's why we come back to the point of investing earlier, which means that they then force themselves to become more aggressive in a time where they shouldn't really be aggressive. Yeah. Retirement savings is a classic example of that. And often at times like this, when I mean, we are in seriously uncertain times, yes. um, markets are fluctuating almost on a day-to-day -day basis, um, a lot of people then want to run away from the market. Yeah. What advice would you give them? You know, there's, there's two people that, that I believe philosophy that people should follow. And the one is Warren Buffett and the other one is uh, Sir John Temp Templeton. Now, if you look at both of those guys, I mean, Warren Buffett as an example, I mean, at the age of 11, he went and he bought his first three shares, City Services, and I mean, he, he did well. Yeah. And look at where he is today. Another guy, uh, as an example, is uh, Sir uh, Templeton, uh, John. And in terms of, of him, he started in 1939 when the World, world War was happening yeah. and Hitler was on the forefront there and markets were really bad. You would think that would be the worst time to invest. But it wasn't, and he did well. And you know, the, the problem that we also find is a lot of people tend to, to follow trends. They want to buy when something's high, not when something's yeah. low. But that's not how and, you make and that's money. E that's exactly what you need to do. And from an investment perspective, I think a lot of people, especially in these current times, people look at the investments and they look at, at the return on, on the all share index as an example. You look at the all share index and it's less than 1%. It's, it's in negative territory at yeah. the moment. Yet you look at money market, you're looking at 6 7%. So what happens? People want to move the investments out at that low rate and go into a money market. But all that you're doing is you're locking in that loss.
Yeah. Because when the markets pick up again, that's when you want to go back in. Go and that's not really the time that you should be going in. You should be selling off some of the stuff at that particular time, maybe to lock the profit in. Don't lock the loss in. The mechanics of building a portfolio, um, how do you go about it? Look, I, th I think the, one of the keys to building a, a, a portfolio, there's two real keys that I would say. The first thing is to diversify. You know, you don't want all your eggs into one basket. Yeah. You want to try and have your, your sort of spread your risk across different asset classes. I mean, you know, if I look as an example, back in pre-2000 when the rand was 12 rand to the dollar, everybody thought it was going to go to 20. Yeah. What happened? It went to 6. So if you'd put all your eggs into offshore, you would have lost half you your capital. The second part that I would say is that get an expert involved. You know, I, nobody goes and works on their, that's not a mechanic, is going to go work on their BMW and try and do their own thing. So get the use, make use of an expert who knows what they do for that very reason. Give you the guidance and they must be at top of things for you. We'll leave it there. Thanks Thank for you. your time. Today, Troy Lars is Head of Distribution at Stringfellow Investment Specialists.